Hello, and welcome to tonight's gallery talk. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Kathleen Morgan, and I serve as the Director of Development and Community Partnerships at Lawrence Public Library. Lawrence Public Library, together with its friends and foundation, are delighted to be a partner in the Lawrence Green Spaces Art Project. First, a little bit of housekeeping for tonight's program. This program was pre-recorded, and as you watch it, we would like you to add any questions or comments that you might have in the chat box. We have uh, various library staff and others associated with this project monitoring the chat and we'll answer your questions um, as we go. So just a, a quick little um, primer, your chat box is, should be right on the bottom of your screen. So most of us have seen and appreciated the wonderful National Park travel posters that were famous during the Depression era. This project takes that concept and applies it to the beautiful Lawrence green spaces and outdoor areas. There are 11 artworks in all created by 10 local artists that embrace that style of national park travel posters uh, that were made famous during the WPA Federal Art Project. The planets really aligned for this particular project and it's a wonderful collaboration between 10 local artists, Lawrence Magazine, the Douglas County Community Foundation, the Kansas Land Trust, Mainline Printing, and of course, Lawrence Public Library. Um, as a matter of fact, the library has incorporated this project into its summer reading program this year. It's part of our annual effort to encourage people in our community to get out and enjoy the beautiful green spaces that make Lawrence such a wonderful place to live. Uh, this, year, this year, more than ever, we know that it's incredibly important to get out of the house and get some fresh air, and this is the perfect excuse to do that. So one quick final note is that you can purchase postcards and prints of the posters uh, through the library's website. Uh, that URL is lplks.org. The proceeds will go to the artists as well as the library's friends and foundation. So on behalf of our the library, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much to our partners for including us in this incredibly brilliant project. And I guarantee that you're in for a real treat tonight. So enjoy. So uh, I originally thought of this project as something to do for the state of Kansas. And the reason that came to me is because I have written a lot for Lawrence Magazine and Kansas Magazine, but a couple years ago, I did this travel all in one year to every state park to take a hike. And it was also as a way of seeing the state, even though I'd written about it so much, there was still a lot that I had not seen and, was, and, had, and really wanted to see. And just as the year went on, I just realized more and more just the pockets of beauty in our state and, and how much I appreciated our parks and our landscape and our public spaces. And so, um, meanwhile, I'd always loved the National Parks posters and it just seemed like, wow, wouldn't that be fun to do this for um, our, the area that we're from? And uh, so that was kind of bouncing around in my mind. And when we uh, began to talk about it for Lawrence Magazine, of course, well, why not try Lawrence Parks? And so this was uh, something that I loved, the WPA posters, and to try to translate it into a local setting was challenging and fun. And I w w hoped would really interest people because it was their own backyard. And so that's how it began. And I always sort of visualized it as something with several artists. I, I really wanted to do a piece myself, uh, but, I always thought it would be really fun to see what other artists came up with and what parks they liked. And um, so it's just turned into a really lovely collaborative project and um, full of uh, kind of surprises and um, really ended up being a project that did, I feel like, uh, carry the spirit of the WPA posters to just sort of a different place, but also celebrate that style. Mm -hmm. I guess the way 
we sort of conceptualized the project was to pick out elements from the original posters that were very iconic. Uh, for example, the, there's a use of framing. Um, there's a use of perspective going back. There's a use of a limited palette. Um, there's sort of a use of um, sort of a majestic feeling. So we had guidelines like this, that, that for the artists. I really, um, I didn't think that we'd have too much trouble being completely repetitive with the WPA posters because artists generally are very creative and come up with things that, you know, are kind of surprising and, and they certainly did. Uh, but we were hoping that it would have that feeling and that um, reminiscence of something something that was sentimental and you loved, but yet was kind of interesting and different. And I thought just the local side, just the subject matter alone would make it different enough because the National Parks posters are of things like the Grand Canyon and you know Niagara Falls, giant, wonderful, incredible places. So making a beautiful piece out of something that is kind of small and local, I thought would certainly give it a different twist. And I think it did. Well, I think uh, one of the essential elements had to do with the um, design approach. Um, one of the commonalities we were seeing on the older posters was they were either framed um, on both sides by like a natural feature like a tree or a canyon wall, or there was another kind of a design approach that they had where they'd have a central figure that was like really big and up, up front in the poster. So we were looking for those kind of design, um, d design elements um, that you could see that really connected the earlier WPA posters. And then we also thought about palette, not per se picking the artist palette, but thinking about a limited palette and how we can do a lot with uh, five or six colors possibly on those uh, approaches. Uh, I think that when those post posters were made back in the 30s, uh, there was probably a limited uh, printing technology they could use. So they could probably max out at like uh, six colors or something like that. So we wanted to make sure that, you know, all of our, all the artists were kind of approaching it from that kind of mindset a little bit. And then we looked for uh, connecting fonts that were very much of the era as well. And I think most everybody kind of went with a central font for each poster. So I think that really worked out well for them. So the font, I think the name of the font is NPS 1935, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it is sort of a, uh, you know, reminiscent of the same font used that the original National Park posters used. Not all of them, I think, but uh, so just seeing the shapes of those letters, I think kind of triggers something mm -hmm. in your brain a little bit that gives you that sort of retro feel. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, uh, and also the, you know, the, the title that C. Lawrence, there was a C. America was one of the taglines of the poster series. And so that was another way to sort of connect that back with the font and with the text itself. Mm -hmm. And but with the, the original NPS posters, it was kind of like it was a pretty rigid format for the, the text and like what information went on there and where it went. Um, but with these posters, uh, it was nice to kind of like play around and like uh, work with the image using the text and kind of like add to the composition in like exactly. a new way and, mm -hmm. and kind of change up the placement of the text and the colors and uh, yeah. Yeah, and Stephanie was our technician as far as putting the text on many of the uh, art pieces. So it, the artist would create the piece and then Stephanie would take it and um, use the color palette that they mm -hmm. had used for the text, and and in several times it just sort of um, enhanced the whole image in a way that was unexpected um, with you know the use of color mm -hmm. and placement um, of the font. I thought definitely, yeah, yeah. 
that was a fun aspect for me, for sure. <laughs> Oh, you know what, I, I think it was kind of like that whole idea for me that you always hear about people growing up in New York and they've never gone to the Statue of Liberty or they've, you know, never kind of gone to those typical, what you think of touristy spots or um, really great spots in their town. You know, they know they should go there and they don't. So about, I guess it would have been about five years ago after they actually had the, the building done when I first, uh, I took my kids out there because I think there was some sort of family outreach, um, family outreach program going on out there. So we went out there and we were able to get in the canoes and kind of uh, scoot around out on the wetlands a little bit. And then after that, I started going out there just to kind of like run. I'd go out there because it was a quiet place to run. and. Um, the terrain wasn't tough, you know, I didn't have to deal with hills or anything. And I eventually, you know, would find myself like slowing down as I ran. Um, not because I was tired, but because I was just kind of like starting to pay attention to uh, the wildlife out there and to the noises or the lack thereof. You can almost get to a certain corner at the wetlands where you can't hear cars. Um, and the other thing I'm struck by out at the wetlands is it has that uh, big Kansas sky that we, we kind of uh, think about when we're driving out on I-70. It's a good place to capture it here in Lawrence. And you get to see the whole kind of uh, cityscape too. If you turn that way, you know, you, if you turn north, right, at the wetlands, you get to see KU up on the hill. So it has these wonderful um, views. And it's also just like unlike any terrain that I'm familiar with in Kansas. It's totally different than, you know, a prairie. It's like, you know, an old farm pond, but on a giant scale uh, that we get to go see. And I'm also just amazed that every time I go out there, I'm seeing some sort of wildlife. I'm seeing snakes. Um, I'm seeing all sorts of birds. I've seen a fox out there before and deer. So you really don't have to go that far out um, of town to see something like that and kind of immerse yourself in some good old fashioned uh, nature. That um, it's really hard to define the features by one shot out there because it's a lot of flat area and there's a lot of grasses. There's not a really good point where you could get a high vantage point. So I thought it, I, I started to think about you know, what, what strikes me as one of the best features, and that's the fact that every time I go out there, I see wildlife. So I, I uh, always do thumbnails when I start out with art. And I was focusing on three different um, animals. I was focusing on a turtle, and then I was focusing on black, uh, red-winged blackbirds, and also a heron, you know. And so I worked up three different, or about six or seven different approaches about to each of each animal. And then I kind of settled on that worm's eye view of the turtle. And I was able to kind of work those black, red winged blackbirds in there um, and bring some connecting colors to that. Uh, I think my approach also was to kind of get a little bit of that sky in there and definitely kind of focus on the grass and the ripples of the water. I usually work in traditional media, ink or gouache or paint or printmaking. So the actual line work in the, the piece that we see that's the end piece, that was all done with um, ink pen and ink brush. And then I scanned it in and I did all the colors digitally. Um, this is a little bit differently, different than I usually work. I, um, I, Usually I'm doing all traditional media, media straight up, but I thought like trying to capture the spirit of those uh, WPA posters with more of a flat color scheme um, was a better treatment for this. I worked with kind of um, like a method you would probably compare to gouache or, or, or maybe a little bit of oil, but kind of like gouache painting, even though it was digital. Um, but I tried to stick to really hard edges um, because the traditional WPA posters were mostly all print, you know, printed or screen printable. 
and so they would have cut shapes and I didn't want a bunch of soft rendered uh, you know shadows and so I kept everything to mostly hard edged cuts and shapes and then I did pretend wait a minute I'm not um, living in that era I am living in this era so like what how funny would it be if Smitty Town or if I had traveled back in time and had been hired to do a WPA poster uh, but then with my time travel ability, right, I could compress time and let ink dry and come back with a million layers and do things that honestly would be technically possible with the means that they had available, but would have taken such a ridiculous amount of time and care to stack up all these layers and layers and layers of of work. So this this ended up being a bit of a, a an overlap between some printmaking and, and paintable things, but mostly tried to stick to those hard edges. Um, I was then further inspired by thinking of era and thinking of just even inspiration pieces I have and even finding just my own buy-in of how to celebrate this park, this magical place. There's the rose garden, there's the fountain, there's the gazebo. It's often filled with people. It's often filled with activity. And yet most of these WPA posters don't have really any people in them at all. Uh, or they have teeny tiny little silhouetted people, you know, in the corner to help us feel epic, uh, the, the awe of the thing in front of us, the central image. And so I came back to the WPA posters and I used that composition to help guide me to that gazebo centerpiece. That is the mountain. That is the peak uh, or the national monument we're looking at. Uh, and then I started framing it out. What are the different angles or perspectives I could get? Uh, oh, I could get the Roosevelt fountain in there. That would be great. Oh, I could show some of the rose garden. That would be great. Maybe I'm even a bit at an angle that would be almost impossible to get, but that's where illustration and magic come in. A friend of mine uh, told me there was, uh, there was a medicine wheel in, the, in Haskell campus. And I knew at the time uh, not so much about the medicine wheel of the Native Americans of North America. I understood the concept as part of being indigenous or having an indigenous traditions um, and growing up uh, learning or, or learning how my ancestors uh, found spaces, uh, special spaces to pray or for to the ceremony. Uh, and uh, in, in my uh, tradition, uh, the language spoken is, is Quechua, uh, which was the language of the Inca Empire. And the name for those places are called wakas, which means uh, special sacred places. Uh, and sometimes they will uh, choose it to make a temple or to bury it a special person uh, or uh, a, a priest or a priestess. Um, so when I heard of there was a special place such that I thought I would like to go see it. And uh, I cannot remember who, who I went with, but um, I just felt that it was, this is a, this is a, it's an amazing place to, to, if you understand it, if you feel, if you understand it, if you, you put the intention of your, your, um, of the moment you are entering the space, uh, which we should do in any space. But uh, I was really happy that there was, um, something that was built especially for people who who would like to uh, use it for personal uh, for a personal prayer for uh, a personal moment so to just communicate with you and and the the, the spirits of whichever is your your approach um. well, the medicine wheel has uh, four sides uh, it has a center and I am pointing out my uh, symbol I have because it's uh, sacred for my tradition. And like the medicine wheel has four sides. This also, if you div divide it, it has four sides too. Uh, and it's used in different ways for, a, for a, as medicine, that's what it's called medicine, uh, medicine wheel. Uh, so that's, that's the main uh, similarity that I found between the medicine wheel uh, here and the tradition of the medicine wheel and my personal tradition.
I thought that the, the choice of um, inspire in, or being inspired in the WPA uh, was great because the, the way those posters were made uh, takes some, just some colors and uh, segments. And, uh, and when I look it up on Google Earth and I thought, oh, I, I can, that can work out. And I thought it was a, that's what I chose. I mixed um, the, 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 the visual that is on Google Earth with the original um, uh, and, and create a combination of both in, in, the, in the art. Um, well, I, um, I hope as, as close as can be with it to WPA style. Uh, I, it, the limit, color limitation uh, was a little bit of a challenge because I saw more than one green, <laughs> uh, but I did see the, in the green, in the, in the palette. Um, uh, but I think it was not, I mean, I found that the thing I, don't, I didn't find that difficult was to, to synthesize those colors. Uh, what it was, uh, it became a little challenge is that um, trying to, to make it look as if, as if, it's, if it has uh, depth. And uh, I, I personally, you know, as a self-critic, I think it could have been a little more depth, but I, I was pretty, pretty happy with the result at the end, so. I started using Riverfront Park before I even moved to Lawrence. I lived in Kansas City for eight years prior to moving to Lawrence in 1996. And I came out with friends uh, to mountain bike on the trails and really loved that and thought, wow, if I uh, lived in Lawrence, I'd use this all the time. And so, uh, yeah, when I moved to Lawrence in 1996 and used the bike trails and hiked on them and then I uh, got more interested in the river itself and discovered Friends of the Kaw and started going on some of their float trips and got my own kayak and started interacting with the park in a lot of different ways, um, still hiking. And I, I'm probably down there three days a week at least using the levee trails or uh, biking on the trails or kayaking from the boat ramp. and. So, I, yeah, I use it a lot. You know, half of my work is aerial views of the Kansas River, so that was kind of my natural starting point to be able to see the river as, you know, a portrait of the river almost itself from above. And that was kind of a handy device to be able to see, uh, be able to show the different uses, the kayakers launching from the boat ramp and the little the mountain bikers using the trails and. So um, for this project, I specifically went to the boat ramp and got some drone footage above the ramp and different angles so that I could kind of get all those elements in to be able to show the bike trails and to show the kayakers at the bottom of the boat ramp. And, and even that uh, far view of the levee itself, you can see in there curving around the, the agricultural fields and um, so, I mean, I tried to get as much in there as I could. So the process was getting the drone shots and taking those photographs and kind of collaging things together on the computer. And, um, you know, kind of, I think it's, it's still sort of painterly in a graphics way, but I wanted to, you know, it was easy to use, you know, Photoshop to really limit the colors and have that kind of you know, that limited color graphic style of the WPA posters. I've looked at the posters, you know, admired those posters for many years. In fact, I did a jigsaw puzzle this, just this last year of all the WPA posters, which was really cool. And so I got to see how, um, I just noticed how they used like one featured element of the park, sort of an iconic image of the park and then just kind of designed around that and have that long view and then the kind of activity maybe happening in the foreground. And so, yeah, I kind of, you know, followed that style a little bit and then the, the five to six 
colors. Um, when I first moved to Lawrence in 2016 uh, to start school, I just rode on the Lawrence Loop all the time. Um, it's become a like a huge staple between my friends and I and in the community just as a way to like get out of town or get in town or you know go around town um, and there's just so much variety in it you you know you go through all the neighborhoods you see pretty much like all of Lawrence in one ride if you choose to do it that way um, and it's just so useful like you, you can go walk it, you can go bike it, rollerblade, roller skate, walk your dog, you know. Uh, it's good for dates if you want to do that too. <laughs> so, you know, it just, it's a place that we can all um, use and be happy about. And it's just probably one of the best things that we have in Lawrence. Um, I was really looking for an iconic Vista uh, for the loop because that's just kind of the way the WPA style um, goes. I mean, how can you compete with a bunch of national parks with huge waterfalls and rocks and monumental landscapes? And that area was just, I mean, you have like the large sweeping uh, plane that you sit into and uh, get to go through and I think that part is just so cool that like, the world kind of surrounds you and there's really nothing else over there and then you exit out into the uh, Clinton Lake area. Um, I think it's, it's a pretty popular spot. I know a lot of people, a lot of people um, will use that area as like, I don't know, like they're getting into wherever they need to be, whether it's a dog park or the um, soccer fields or what have you. I think I, I like to do my line drawings and use that as in the final piece because I want it to kind of have a little graphic nature but still have the line drawing in there too. So I think that's why I work that way is I, I like to try to get a somewhat accurate line drawing first, but then I like to add some kind of cartoon kind of style and graphic nature to it later. Yeah, I mean, my drawing is pretty much, it'll just look like a plain line framework. And then you put that in the computer and then sit and add blocks of color and kind of just keep adding and adding. And I'll be like, ooh, let's do highlights now and I'll add a bunch of highlights and then I'll be like, now I want shadows. And if I just keep going, it's almost like a rabbit hole, but it's fun because you can just keep doing more and more. And then I start thinking about if I'm gonna print it, maybe I can underbase this one and get another color. And it, it's amazing how much life goes in to a thing when you just keep adding and adding. You know, I think we, it's easy to forget to prioritize valuing these places and protecting them because everything is so monetized now that if we don't protect them, they're just going to be gone. So probably now it's more about putting attention on these places to help remind us to value them and that we need them and that they're vanishing quickly. And, you know, it's, it's pretty cool to see parks and green spaces being honored like that in that form. Hopefully it helps people take a moment to maybe look at them in a new way or at least not forget about them. Uh, I've lived on the east side of town for I think about eight years now and um, have been playing with the Caw Valley Kickball League for I think seven years. This would have been our seventh. Um, and so 
the Hobbs Stadium, especially with the game under the lights, has been um, kind of a soft spot on my heart for a long time to go watch the games and to play in the games um, when the season is on. That was um, kind of our first experience with um, Hobbs Park. And then, you know, in the in the meantime, um, our son is kind of growing up in the area. And so we've gone to the park um, a lot when he was little and playing on the playground. And more recently in COVID times, um, we've avoided the playground, but we're finding new things to do at the stadium and taking our own kickball and um, just kind of kicking that around and having fun um, out on the field. I knew it was going to be um, definitely my park of choice, but also really challenging because there are so many really great aspects of the park that I wanted to include and how to um, kind of incorporate them all in one visual space. Um, really the best vantage point for that was from the top of the stadium. Um, I wanted to include the diamond, um, but also the playground and the historic house that is there also. And so um, to kind of get those all in one space, um, that was the, the vantage point that I used. Um, with the uh, WPA style, I believe that a lot of those were originally screen printed. And um, I've been looking at those posters for a long time. I think that there's just so much great content and design elements. Um, and so um, with this project, um, I'm not a screen printer, um, but I like to use a lot of um, cut paper and different materials um, to make my illustrations. And so this was kind of a nice opportunity to use some of the textures and papers that I already had available um, and kind of apply them and treat them and create a design that was similar to the way that um, a screen print would be made. You know, the, the WPA posters were a great um, like public service announcement for all different aspects of life. And um, I feel like for this project, um, it's, it's a really timely project. Um, and I'm sure that that wasn't wholly intended to happen, you know, during a pandemic, but the idea of kind of reinvigorating everybody's um, interest and enthusiasm and appreciation for our outdoor spaces right here that are under our noses, I think is a really good, um, it's a really, uh, really awesome time to be doing that because I think a lot of people are, you know, staying in the area and when you are getting outside and out of your home that you want to do it um, kind of in an open air place, um, which is our green spaces. So I feel like it's also maybe kind of a good awareness campaign for where we are today here in Lawrence. Mm -hmm. Well, the big thing for me was composition for those two. Like for both of them, I kind of have like a large um, prominent thing about the park in the center. Of, or like the foreground of the piece. So with the Centennial, that was the missile, and with Mutt Run, it's the hay bale and my dog Trout. Um, and then the rest of the composition kind of wraps around like that. And I also chose to use uh, limited, but like kind of specific color palettes for both of them, um, which kind of echoes the WPA style too, that had, you know, it was only like maybe five layers screen printed, so they only had that limited palette. And I mean, to, to add on to that too, like, who better than artists to kind of depict the beauty of these national parks. Um, so that was like a really kind of smart way of advertising for the WPA posters. So just kind of carrying that through and bringing in all of these local artists to pick out the beauty and the majesty of our local parks is that carries the spirit through beautifully, I think. Well, you know, it actually is funny how it all ended up with this project kind of taking shape over the whole um, course of the virus coming out and the fact that it popped up when everybody was kind of inside and a lot of people aren't traveling, you know, in the Lawrence area. So to that effect, it, you know, it really kind of hit in a good spot because people could be like, oh yeah, we can still go outside and stay, stay away from people and, and stay kind of socially distanced. Um, so I think it serves a purpose locally to remind people that yes, we have these wonderful things in our own backyard that we can go and visit without actually having to, to uh, make a, a long trip towards. I think um, the other thing I, I thought about is, um, I, I wanna say like my generation probably, um, 
I grew up with my foot in the door, or in, I grew up with my, my foot outside and also my foot inside. You know, I was raised on TV, but we still got plenty of outdoor time. Um, I think people are increasingly making uh, virtual spaces and indoor spaces. I think we've kind of made that shift, um, especially here in the US where people mostly spend their time indoors. Um, so I think of it also as a way to kind of nurture our uh, mental health a little bit, um, to remind people that there are these really great outdoor spaces because uh, I read a, I guess I read a couple books a couple years ago and there, there's a concept of forest bathing of like you're so stuck in this kind of uh, um, indoor society where you don't get much natural air, you don't get natural light because you're under lights. Um, I think bringing attention to the outdoors um, for your own mental health is a really great uh, concept that these can serve people uh, for. Ever since I started painting uh, here, uh, well, when I moved to Lawrence, I really started plein air painting in earnest. And in some ways, I've always felt like I'm creating elegies of some sort because so many times I've gone back to my favorite spots and the subject is gone. <laughs> you know, whether it's a road through the wetlands or um, a favorite tree line and out in the floodplain, things change and things go away. and and even on you know short term and small scale so um yeah as far as uh thinking about the climate changing and our ecosystems changing and uh, it's it's uh something I, I yeah i've been thinking about like how do the clouds look different now than they would have a decade ago or whatever what, what am i seeing you just don't know like are they bigger, are they heavier, you know, more laden with, <laughs> you know, torrential rains, are they, I wonder, well, how, do, how does the sky look different already than it would have 100 years ago or whatever? I mean, there I have some answers to that, but um, yeah, I feel like partially it's documenting, partially it's trying to experience what's going on um, staying connected with it and figuring out ways to adapt and and think about how it changes my work too. Um, I think it's uh, very important. Uh, this project is it is very important for uh, for this city and for everybody who is who has uh, shown a lot of interest in, in the uh, green park and spaces because uh, we are in Osage land and Kansas land and, and just to think about not just the medicine wheel painting is indigenous land. Each one of the parks are indigenous land. 